to the Eclipse Mega Movie Photo Team Training Webinar. I am thrilled to be a part of this historic project, and tonight we're going to give you all the information that you need to know in order to participate in the Mega Movie uh, Photo Team. So, first, I want to get started and let you know who's going to be joining us tonight. We have a really stellar lineup of panelists. Calvin Johnson is joining us from Google Making and Science. Um, department and he is the heart behind this project. He's got a lot of investment in it and he's running a team who are going to be stitching together all of these photos that you're all taking and um, and he'll uh, have a lot to say about how that all works. Also from UC Berkeley we have Dr. Laura Petacolis with us and Dr. Hugh Hudson. These are the gurus of the entire project. They're the ones who came up with the idea and um, they're going to give you some background on the project as well as on the science of what we're going to be studying with these pictures. As well joining us from Disneyland is Dr. Igor Ruderman and he is going to help us with some of the technical aspects of how to set up all of your equipment. And Todd Vorenkamp, I'm thrilled to have with us here tonight from b &H Photo. He is an expert at equipment and taking pictures of eclipses, solar viewing through cameras and making sure that you have all of your equipment in hand. He's going to give us some help with that and I'll tell you about some exciting B&H photo um, options at the end. Uh, and then I said, as I said before, I am Vivian White and I work with Brian Cruz and David Prosper at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. And we are here to help make sure that all of you participants in the mega movie have everything you need to make sure that this is a really successful project. So if you have any questions, you're always welcome to come to us with those. I just wanna give you a little bit of a heads up about what we're gonna be talking about tonight. So this webinar is designed so that by the end of it, you will be able to see all of the information that you needed to know in order to take pictures to participate in the mega movie, the Eclipse mega movie. Uh, there are quite a few steps and I wanted to let you know that they are also written up online. The link is at the bottom there and if somebody wouldn't mind putting that in the chat, you can just click on it from the chat. Oops, for some reason I can't get to the chat this evening. Um, so what we're going to go over, Laura is going to give us a little bit of background on the project as well as what we're going to be doing with the science. Then David Prosper is going to give us the photo team setup and go through this list with you and take you through all of the things that you might need to know in order to be able to take pictures. Then Calvin will teach us how to upload the photos and that's something that'll be coming online really soon. We're quite excited about that. We'll tell you about some upcoming opportunities to test out your equipment. And then the most important part are your questions, the Q&A. Um, I wanna make sure that we get to as many of those as possible and we're excited to have you join us tonight. So um, let's see, with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And Laura, I would love to hear from you. Can, are you able to share your screen any better than I was? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> She's All been right. on a cross country tour promoting the project and making sure that every little town on the path is ready for August 21st. So um, she can tell us all about this mega movie with any luck. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so I just have my name on here, but I'm gonna have Hugh um, chime in. So uh, when he would like to, and also Hugh uh, will be available for questions. Um, so it's really a pleasure to be here today and have, I see we have, I think 98 of you on our Zoom today, which is a very exciting number. <laughs> So I'm going to start uh, way back in 19 or 1860. So you, you might think that this is a new idea, um, but it's not in that it was actually done by a bunch of astronomers in Europe in 1860 on July 18th. There was a, um, 
a total solar eclipse and you can see the path here going through Spain and a little bit in Algeria and you see back then of course they didn't have digital cameras <laughs> or cameras um, and they were drawing what they were seeing in the corona in as the path um, went through Spain but and you can see in these images these little um, these these streaks uh, we'll talk a little bit about those and some loops here um, and it wasn't at this point in our knowledge of solar science and stellar science, we didn't really understand that the sun was magnetic or the importance of magnetism on the sun. And it was in part be because of this um, event and some other um, eclipses that several years later, a scientist proposed that these loops were um, caused by magnetism, which indeed they are. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I wanted to, uh, Hugh Hudson's on our call today, and uh, this is also my colleague, Scott uh, McIntosh, and the two of them uh, kind of came up with this idea at a, at a astronomical meeting scientific meeting where I think Shadi, Shadia Habal had brought up the, po the point, this was about six years ago, that we would be having this amazing total solar eclipse crossing the, the continental US. Um, and I don't know, Hugh, if you want, since you were there, if you want to um, chime in and say anything about that, that moment. It was a fine moment. It was just great. Uh, Scott and I looked at each other and, and we both said, whoopee, <laughs> to each other. And uh, that was the beginning of our thinking about this archive, creating this archive, which would be like uh, something that would collect all the images from which one could stack them up and sp split, play them out in different forms in a dynamic kind of way and make a movie that might go for the full hour and a half. So that was basically the story. Yeah, and then after Hugh and Scott um, kind of discussed this, Hugh ended up kind of going around the country talking to various people about the project and came into my office and said, what do you think about this project? Do you think it might be possible? And would you like to be part of it? And I said, I would love to be part of that. And I think it's absolutely possible. <laughs> Um, and I just I wanted to give a little bit of um, background in terms of what NASA does about the sun um, in context to these eclipses um, and just give you a little bit of um, background about uh, the corona in general. So what I'm showing here are three different um, images. So on the left here, this blue image is a chronograph, uh, which is essentially a camera on a spacecraft out in space. And what you're seeing here is uh, a disc that's being held in front of the camera by this um, handle, by this handle. And so it's blocking the bright disc of the sun. And if the disc, this um, mechanical arm with the disc weren't there, then you would, the, the bright sun would be this uh, white circle. So essentially this is the, the diameter of this, this is the disc of this, the bright disc of the sun being blocked by a mechanical arm on a, on a spacecraft. And what you see then is you see this wonderful uh, atmosphere of the sun called the corona, which has these loops that you just saw being drawn by astronomers. Um, over 100 years ago, and streamers, and you can also see the planets in this particular image, and then behind the planets you see the stars, so Pleiades is being pulled out here, and um, here's Mercury, and this was an a image taken in 2000. Um, then this middle diagram I'm showing here is in 2016 by a different instrument, and what you can see here is that the, the disk is a, a little bigger, or well it's a, actually a little smaller, but the picture um, is a zoom in of the corona. So you're, you're seeing kind of closer in. Um, you can see that the disc doesn't cover quite as much of the, of the chroma, corona. And so again, the white circle is the, the bright disc of the sun. And it, again, it's just being held, it's eclipsing the sun um, at all times. And then what, what's interesting here, or well, the reason I'm showing these two images is because what, what you see is that you have to have a disc bigger than the diameter of the sun in order for two reasons one is there's a little bit of a wobble on most spacecraft and so if you had the disc the same size as the disc of the sun um, then it would the sun would peak peak through every time it would wobble a little bit and that would 
saturate the, the image of the, the camera, so that's a problem. And then also you have diffraction because this disc is quite close to the camera, and so you would get diffraction lines, um, also problematic. Uh, so that's what's so wonderful about a total solar eclipse and observing the corona from Earth is the moon is very, very far away from Earth, so we don't have to worry about diffraction so much. And then it also doesn't wobble, <laughs> at least not, not at the time scales that we're worried about. Um, and the moon's completely covering the disk. So we have this amazing opportunity to study the sun in white light really, really close to the disk and see this transition region um, because the turns out that the sun uh, isn't like a candle in that a candle, it gets hotter, it gets cooler as you go farther away from the flame. Um, the sun, which is this ball of hot gas, uh, as you go further from the disk of the sun, it actually heats up. And it's this very uh, strange phenomenon that has to do with the fact that there's magnetism there and, and particles, charged particles. And we're still trying to understand exactly why this heating up occurs. And there's this beautiful transition area where it starts to heat up and gets hotter and hotter. And that area is where we can study um, the sun using these eclipses. So I wanna show you a movie that was made in 2013 using um, data from satellites, um, NASA satellites. What you're seeing here is the sun in the ultraviolet. So normally we don't see the sun, but in the ultraviolet, because our eyes can't see ultraviolet, but you can see how dynamic and interesting it is. And then what you're seeing here are those chronographs, and this whole movie is about a day and a half, and you can, I think that's right, you can <laughs> um, tell me if it's a day and a half or so. And you, is that right? I was looking at a question. So what was the question? Uh, I think that this movie is about a day and a half of data. Oh, uh, yes, probably. I'm looking yeah. at it now. Okay. Um, so what you see here is up close to the sun in the ultraviolet, you get these amazing uh, beginning of a coronal mass ejection. Um, and so the corona is a bunch of mass, has a bunch of acids being ejected from the sun, thus the name. And you can see this amazingly dynamic system that comes off of the sun. The other thing that you'll notice in this movie is there's this black space right here. And that's again, because that disc that's blocking the corona, the corona is hiding our information about the sun in that area. So essentially our mega movie will fill in this disc area and also overlap some with these other chronographs out in space. And it's uh, this amazing opportunity we have to really understand this, this transition region and waves in that area. Um, and so we're very excited about that. And Hugh, I don't know if you wanna kind of add to the, that, that science. But that's, yeah, that's a, a good description of the whole business and the diffraction is the key thing there, of course, because we now can look look into the inner corona. The uh, the thing that Mega Movie brings to this to all of the kinds of things that people have classically done in the corona in, in this kind of research area is to uh, bring high good sampling because there's so many of us, so many of us Mega Movie people and other people out there who are taking pictures, and so adding them all together gives us this vast uh, detailed uh, sampling as time goes by. And so this is the new dimension that the uh, electronics and camera uh, developments nowadays have made possible. So I think that's the classical side of coronal science and Mega Movie will do an excellent job of a lot of that. Are there are other, other things that you'll talk about but that we'll talk about as we go on, I guess, uh, that Mega Movie also contributes. Yeah, and we can add more when we get to, um, to questions too. So here's kind of a, a little graphic I put together. These, these are images I just grabbed off the internet that were uh, Creative Commons. And so you, each, you all are kind of spread across this path and um, you'll be providing these images. The images might look something like this, <laughs> in fact. Uh, hopefully a little larger. We'll get to the kind of the um, image sizes that we're looking for. But, and then, um, oh, and I just want to give you a little bit more history on this. So uh, we did write a little proposal to the National Science Foundation to test some of these ideas in 2012 and got that funded. And here's uh, Scott and Hugh and others from the um, High Altitude Observatory that went to Australia. And this is a, uh, a picture of the total solar 
eclipse, um, and you'll see that you have twilight all the way around the horizon during a total solar eclipse. Um, and you also kind of see that if you take a whole big picture like this, the, you see the moon and the, the corona there, but it's not, the resolution's not so great. Um, so what I did is I did a little zoom in um, on kind of what the eclipse, a, a really nice photograph of the uh, corona can look like. And this is a Mr. Eclipse, Fred Espinek took this image. Um, and one of, the, one of the cool things that it, that's really, I find really exciting about these eclipse images are also these little red um, spiculas in here as well as um, the corona itself. So you can start to see some of the features that we're excited about um, studying. And if you have enough pictures and then you can, and they're done at different exposures, you can do some really kind of fancy, it's almost an art <laughs> we hear. I have not made one of these myself, self, but we know um, several eclipse chasers who have. And um, it, the, we hope to have enough images from you all uh, taken at different exposures that we will be able to kind of um, create essentially what our eye what your eyes will be able to see um, when the moon is completely covering the sun so the, the our eyes have this amazing dynamic range that cameras simply don't have we have to develop that through um, multiple exposures uh, rates and so or times so I just want to show you a really beautiful photograph of kind of what, what your eyes will actually see and also to remind you all that we do want you to experience this eclipse um, fully so we don't want the, the taking the photos to, to kind of take away from that experience and I want to say that explicitly um, and we'll talk a little bit about how to do that uh, so then when in in 2012 Jay Pasikoff one of our other um, science colleagues who's part of our mega movie team uh, he did have two telescopes in, or two telescopes in two different locations in 2012 and what he saw is um, essentially the beginning of one of these coronal mass ejections erupting from from the Sun and so one was in Australia and one was in New Zealand so this is a, an example of, of perhaps two images we might get from you all this is a difference image so we there were two two images that were subtracted from each other to pull out the um, features and here's our team we met at Google um, after that NSF funding. Then uh, we started um, meeting with various companies and uh, we met with a Google team making in science and they really were excited about our project. And then in 2015, they signed on um, in, a, in a really good, a comprehensive way and ever since have really been um, not only our really good partners but have sponsored a lot of our work on this project as well as provided a lot of the project management and resources and Calvin will tell you more about that but we're really grateful for the work that they have done and um, that they really have made this vision happen I have to say. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to stop there because I think um, someone else has this content, so I will. Excellent. That's great, Laura. Every time I hear this, I get more and more and more excited. Um, thank you so much for giving us the background and letting us know what we're about to be a part of. Um, so next up, we have David, and he and Igor are going to be reviewing the setup for taking pictures. And I really appreciate all these questions coming in. Just so you know, it will be answered at the end um, when we have the Q&A time. So don't worry, we are keeping track of them and um, keep posting them. Um, so David is going to be um, working from a document. I'm going to put the document in the uh, chat here. I put it at the beginning as well, but it's the Mega Movie Basics, the bit.ly that has Mega Movie Basics on it. That's posted on the photo team uh, Google Groups. You can also find it there, uh, but that's what we're going to be working off of. So Dave, are you ready? I guess so. All, All right. right. <laughs> okay. Now I'll just share the screen here. All right. Let me put this in the slideshow mode. All right. Does everyone see the presentation okay? No. Nah. So we're still seeing your slide um, view, but you could, I think that should work just fine. Oh. Slide view. Broadcast. Oh, well. Unfortunate. 
<laughs> well, it's a very rough document anyway. Okay, so <laughs> what we got here is this is just a very basic setup. It's from a very rough document that we're working on and definitely your input will help as we fine tune this. In addition, I'm gonna to briefly touch on our test that's coming up too. So, uh, basically, the objective of the Meg movie, as Laura went over, is that we just wanna be able to take pictures of the totality and of the corona, so we need some, get some fine detail. And so that's why we have certain requirements for the equipment, and it's you know fairly general. It's like it's fairly specific. There's little differences here and there, but we can go over those afterwards. But generally, uh, the equipment needs to be fine enough to capture like the wispy part of the sun's corona, a little bit of HDR or high dynamic range, and we must be able to. Sorry, there we go. Uh, report the uh, geographic information and upload the pictures quickly enough to allow a movie to be quickly and automatically assembled and to show the changes of the corona over the 90 plus minutes that it's going to be visible. Or maybe it was 70 plus minutes over North America. I forget offhand. <laughs> um, my apologies. And we're juggling the mix of uh, kind of zooming in to get enough detail, but trying to stay wide enough to capture uh, the inner corona. So while keeping this range as high as possible, so it's uh, not an easy feat for anyone, let alone a thousand of you, but we're gonna try and make this as easy as possible. Um, okay. So for the equipment, it's uh, generally a DSLR camera. Uh, some people have asked, you know, can we use one of the newer mirrorless cameras, like one of those, uh, I think it's a Lumix is one. There's one variety of that, and that is fine, as long as it has, a, you can detach the lenses and use something with, say, a 300 millimeter or better focal length for a full frame uh, camera or a 200 millimeter for a, what's called an APS-C uh, type camera. These are just referring to different types of sensors. Um, and as uh, we mentioned here, this could be a little lower if you have a super high resolution camera, but the goal, again, is just to get a photo several widths of the sun across. So here's a And if you take a look at the document, there's actually, Igor has come up with a really nice calculator, so. That is at the end of this slide here, actually. Oh, great. Yep, uh, the camera spec calculator is available on the Multiverse website at bit.ly uh, slash uh, camcalc, C-A-M-C-A-L-C. -C. You can see the link at the bottom here, and someone can put it in the uh, chat. Um, I'm actually have a grapefruit. This is, in the frame of my video is roughly uh, the size of the sun <laughs> that you'll need. Uh, again, uh, there's also a maximum focal length. If you don't want to zoom in too much, then you'll miss the corona. So that calculator will help with that as well. The tripod, you want to keep it level. You know, they, a lot of them come with a bubble level. Uh, you can use other things, your phone or a regular hardware level up in the hardware store to check that out. You also need a way to get your exact GPS coordinates, and you, a lot of cameras have that built in. You can get a module that auto tags your photos in your camera as well. Uh, you can use your phone, and we'll discuss how to do that in the procedure too. Um, it's nice to have a remote shutter for your camera to avoid vibration as you're taking the pictures. And again, we'll have a lot of this in the equipment FAQ and forum for more details and all the little nuances in these requirements. Um, yeah, the biggest requirement is you. So we need your skills, and the Mega Movie relies on all of you volunteers to actually make this happen. This is a citizen science at its finest. So you all, you project members, are highly skilled photographers. We're all got discipline, and we're going to return incredible results. And we want to make sure that our directions and procedures make sense to all of you and are actually accurate. Because otherwise, all the discipline in the world doesn't make any sense if then we just tell you how to do the pictures the wrong way. Um, but we're confident that this will all be the right way. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is the basic setup procedure. Uh, getting together with checking out your camera, your setup. You want to make sure you've got that DSLR, the telephoto lens, and your GPS in some fashion. Um, so we're testing this on um, June 3rd as well. We encourage everyone to do some test shots. You can at least get a good shot of the moon out of this as well, which is fun. 
Um, and you can also uh, test this out beforehand, of course. You wanna get familiar with this procedure um, before eclipse day to make that shooting a breeze so you can focus more on watching the eclipse. Um, so yeah, so let's get into the preparation. So way in advance, we want you to, uh, you can calculate your ISO and your shutter speed settings for totality. Um, we have a couple websites we can link to later that help you out with that as well. Uh, we want, want to focus on the settings that best display the mid-corona of the sun. And is, that the, is that RoboCop there, Dave? That is when they turn RoboCop on, yes. I wasn't sure if anyone was going to notice. <laughs> Figured it was a good, you know, getting your basic startup sequence down. <laughs> like, a, is this on? <laughs> Especially when you turn on a camera for the first time. If you get a new one with all the new features, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and don't worry, there's no hidden directives in this program. Uh, everything is quite open. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, for auto bracketing, uh, we want you to practice auto bracketing your photos and taking the photos in bursts using the auto bracketing mode. So this actually is one of the things if you've ever done an HDR photo before. This helps, or high dynamic range, really helps to improve your contrast across and get those photos matched together. Uh, you want to advance, get the exact timing of the eclipse for your expected location. So look up where you're going to be, be it Casper, Eugene, St. Louis, Nashville, wherever. So you can kind of figure out uh, what times to kind of prepare for, for second and third contact especially. Um, if you're going to use the computer program to manage your camera settings during the eclipse, and there are several, uh, practice connecting your camera to your computer getting that program up and running so there's no surprises on the day of. Uh, also make sure you have enough batteries and a nice fast SD card as well. That's something I just recently learned that the uh, speed of your SD card really helps determine the quality of your photography. <laughs> um, you wanna study up on Eclipse photography as well. There's the Mega Movie Group, which you're all a part of. Uh, Cloudy Nights has some great members, great discussions. There's there are many other sites as well. The camera manufacturers have tips. Uh, b &H Photo has some good tips. A lot of places have some good stuff. So just kind of go hog wild preparing. <laughs> so on the day of, which is, I don't know why I said June 21st. That was the wrong one. It's August 21st. I got the long, wrong logo. My apologies. <laughs> but um, on August 21st, uh, 2017, uh, Get your uh, camera's timer set. So use the built-in GPS of available, make sure it's turned on and actually tagging your camera. Uh, set your camera to the best quality RAW or JPEG images. Uh, RAW is actually now preferred. Uh, make sure your equipment is charged up and that the card has lots of space. And make sure you have all your equipment with you and ready to go. A uh, checklist is really handy for that and double check your eclipse timings again. And it's really handy to set an alert five minutes before totality. You can of course use your phone, watch, whatever you prefer to do that. Dave, could so, you advance the slide? I think we're on the last slide. Oh no, uh, right before the eclipse, prepare. Okay. So next up. Uh, we're still we seeing your preparation for an advance. Oh. What the heck? Let me unshare this. Oh. Joel from b &H Photo just hopped in uh, to the chat and showed, um, I'm going to share, he shared it with the panelists that um, they have a lot of tips and articles. And I'm going to go ahead and share that. If you're sharing something and you want to share it with everything, make sure you share it to all panelists and attendees, not just the panelists. That just goes to us up here that you can see. But if you want to share it to everybody, Make sure it's all panelists and attendees so that everybody gets to hear what you want to say. Cool. And I think I got the uh, share screen thing fixed. Hopefully, does this actually look like a slideshow now? Okay. And my apologies. <laughs> um, so we're doing preparation for an advance. And now, day of settings. Again, we went through this, the GPS, timing, the raw and all that. All right. So right before the eclipse. We want you to set up your equipment on a tripod and level that tripod. Uh, make sure your timer is set to alert you about five minutes before totality again. 
And so get your camera kind of set up to a, the approximate position of sun at totality. Um, some free apps can help with this. And double check the charge and free space in your camera and turn off the vibration reduction and image stabilization, your image stabilization, sorry. And please turn off your flash. <laughs> Should go without saying, but a lot of times you can forget to turn it off as well. A lot of cameras love to do auto flash as you all may well be aware. So again, determine your GPS coordinates right before the eclipse. This is just a good thing to double check because sometimes the GPS will turn off for power saving or other reasons. So just make sure you have it turned on. It's a good idea to take a picture of yourself or your setup with your camera with its geolocation turned on as well. So this can be submitted with your camera's photos in case some of the photos aren't tagged or something, there's a hiccup there that camera photo in your phone is a nice backup for that. Hey Dave, yes. can you just show us your um, presenter slides because we're still on the wrong slide again. Really? For whatever reason, it's not working tonight. Oh man, here I'm just gonna unshare. Yeah, it's true. No. <laughs> so, no settings here. Let's do desktop. There you go. All right, I got fancy and tried to do it via the PowerPoint. Okay, settings check, prepare for right before the eclipse. Okay. Looks good. All righty, so now you wanna dial in your camera's imaging settings and uh, check your settings for the ISO and the shutter speed. Uh, you should have some notes on that from when you were earlier preparing. You wanna set everything to manual in your camera, uh, gonna set auto bracketing over and under exposure. So it's a minimum of three photo bracket. You can do auto bracketing or a 1.0 exposure level. There's a lot of discussion on specifics on this. Uh, but if your camera supports more than a three photo bracket, then use more, more contrast. Uh, make sure your preferred lens is attached as well. So if you you know, we're gonna use your 300 millimeter lens, make sure that's on. And also put on the solar filter if you're taking photos before totality. So it also helps aim your camera with that as well. And now focus your camera, turn off the autofocus. Now what you wanna do is focus on infinity or barring that the most distant object that you can see, not the sun at this point. And then using your screen, the actual viewfinder on your camera, focus on that distant image, zoom in on the image, and then kind of fine tune your focus that way. If you're using a computer, there's lots of built into the different interface programs that really help here. So lock the focus. Some of these lenses have a lock already built in. A lot of them don't, and they have what's called focus creep. So you can use the very high tech gaffer tape and tape this down. Um, another use for that tape is to cover the flash, <laughs> just in case something goes wrong. Oh, uh, one thing I found, and I haven't been able to personally check this out, if there's these little rubber rings you can also get that are like, also called, that are also, uh, they're basically like nice rubber bands that lock the focus as well. I think they're called focusing rings or something like that, but you can, you can link to that afterwards. Yeah, right before, uh, we're getting close to the wire now, so connect all your items. Connect the remote trigger uh, or enable the wireless remote in your camera and test it because it might still need batteries too. Uh, if you have no trigger, just set the timer or the delayed photo option in your camera. Or again, connect the control laptop if you haven't already. Check your laptop's battery power if you're using that. And it's or its power source if you're using a power tank or a really long extension cord or whatever you're doing and just make sure the camera's mounted nicely on that tripod and good and stable. And then while you wait, cover the camera with a white or reflective cloth to help keep it cool until you're about to use it. So now we're at totality, your alarm's gone off, you're all set, got your settings dialed in, taking images of totality. Now make sure the camera is pointed at the sun, of course, 
but you know, just double check. And uh, when totality hits, you want to remove the solar filter. And you can actually remove the filter, depending about up to 15 seconds beforehand. And you may be able to catch some of the Bailey beads this way, which are always very nice. And so now it's time to take these photos. So snap as many bracketed burst shots as you like. If you can just get one good shot, that's really great, but more is better. And if it's bracketed, you know, you need to take it's several in a burst for each series. So one burst, I guess we could say. And then afterwards, you know, as quickly as you can, upload those photos. And we'll discuss this in the next segment. And then again, yeah, take as many as you can in the two and a half minutes. And the faster your card, the more your camera can take. So again, our test run is on June 3rd, 2017. It's uh, time to shoot the moon, the evening of June 3rd. I used the procedure outline in the above segment, which we're gonna have available in that nice little document. Uh, well, there's a few exceptions, of course. Um, there's no eclipse timer needed, but you can practice using the eclipse timer. And no solar filter is needed for the moon. Some folks might want to use a neutral density filter to catch, catch it. Don't really need to this time, of course. Um, anyway, if you're taking pictures of the moon for this test procedure, take about two, two and a half minutes worth of photos, or as many as you expect to take during totality, and then submit them. And I believe Calvin will be uh, getting into that shortly. And that's the basics and apologies for the, uh, pick up with my video but there you go hopefully that was relatively clear thank you dave i appreciate you going You're through welcome. that with us so i'm sure there's going to be lots of questions and i look forward to answering those we'll also have a follow-up um, webinar after this uh, we'll be doing some more training so feel free to hop on those as well um, calvin is going to tell us about this next step of how to actually get your pictures uploaded it's looking really simple and exciting Excellent. All right, let me get my screen all shared. Let's see. All right, someone give me a shout if you can't see things, but I think we should be. Looks great. Right now, all right. I'm getting my notes. Okay, awesome. So uh, we will be talking through the uh, upload sequence now on the website. So what you're looking at right now is what you hopefully can all see when you go to the uh, Make a Movie website and click on your profile tab where your picture is in the top right. Um, if you're not seeing this, let us know and we can uh, sort that out. This is what you should all see right now. Um, starting at some point next week, the, uh, we'll push an update where you will start to see this. So that you'll, you'll get access to the Upload Eclipse Photos uh, page. This will only be viewable to uh, members of the team. So, um, and this is uh, sort of the first iteration of this, so we'll, we'll continue to sort of improve the design uh, over time, but uh, this is the, the first round that we'll be using in June. So to start things off, we click this box that uh, shows that you own the pictures and you're licensing them under the CC0 license. Uh, there's a link down here, um, which I'll paste into the uh, comments, or in the comment section in a second. Uh, but then the link will also be there on this website. Um, from there, we're ready to start. Uh, so that takes us to this view. This is all still in the same profile uh, page. Um, so you can either drag photos into this section to upload them or uh, click the upload button and go through the standard file picker, which is the version that I show here. Um, so we'll start by picking a file without a GPS location tag. I've seen this question pop up a few times now. Uh, so not everyone will be using the sort of GPS attachments uh, on their DSLRs. So for example, I don't have one on my camera. This is a picture I took uh, off my roof of the Boston skyline. So it has no GPS uh, whatsoever. Um, so once I pick that one and it uploads, um, you get this little warning that says you've uploaded one file, but there's no GPS info found. Um, the sort of method that we have right now for adding GPS to a batch of photos is by uploading one that has a good GPS location. So what we're asking people to do here is to um, take a picture with a smartphone. 
So in my case, I have this picture here of Charlie, my dog, which I took with a smartphone. Uh, and so that has the GPS tag because I have location services turned on on my phone. And so when I upload that one, um, it uh, automatically, uh, so it, it shows a little logo here. Oh, we missed the slide. There we go. Uh, so it shows a little logo here that says a GPS um, location tag has been detected. Um, and when I click the upload button, it will apply that tag to all of my photos um, in, that, in that session. So if you're uploading you know, multiple for multiple people or something like that, uh, there are ways to do that. But so that's the system we've got right now. Um, we've got a few features coming soon. Uh, as soon as it goes to the next page, there it is. Um, so future versions, um, which, as I said before, are likely to come after this June moon test, uh, will include ways to sort of cancel out pictures if you've added one by accident or things like that. We're still working on that. Uh, it's not quite live yet. Um, we're going to fix little things like this uh, stretched out image, uh, so little sort of UI tweaks there. And then, of course, we rely on all of you to tell us what else we're doing wrong. So if, if anything is weird or anything could be better, uh, please let us know, and we'll do our best to uh, make it happen. Um, I think that is it for me, but that will hopefully leave us more time for questions. Yeah, absolutely. So we're running into our Q&A time. Thanks, Calvin. I am so excited to see this up and running. Um, it's going to be great to be able to have you all be able to upload your videos, uh, upload your pictures. Um, so right now I want to go ahead and take some questions. Uh, we've been answering them as we go along, but I want to have these available for everybody. Um, one of the big questions is about piggybacking on a telescope. I think um, a lot of you are amateur astronomers, as I am, and want to put your camera on top of a telescope. So. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this equatorial mount and being able to mount something there? Now, we are going to have Regulus in the picture. Is that going to help us out at all? Um, Hugh and Calvin, maybe, if you want to chime in there. Yeah. So this is, this is something that we're actively exploring. Uh, we are hopeful that we can figure out a way to use this as sort of a, a double-check alignment uh, thing, but are a little worried about exposure levels and whether or not it'll be viewable in all of them. Uh, so it's it's something that we're actively tracking, but don't quite have an answer yet. Yeah, I can add it, add to that. I've been working on this uh, today and uh, yesterday a little bit, uh, based on um, images that I got from the 2006 eclipse in Egypt from a Dutch amateur astronomer who shared me his raw files. The, the interesting thing about that eclipse is that it's at the same phase in the solar cycle, and so roughly speaking, the the gross shape of the corona may be fairly similar. In any case, I've got those images and I'm putting Regulus into them. Of course, at that time, uh, there were only faint stars in the background and you could see them with difficulty. But in our case, we've got Regulus. If the field of view is large enough to extend a couple of degrees, uh, you will see Regulus. And so the question is, how long an exposure do you need to be able to see Regulus? And the answer is, uh, for a camera like Hank's, uh, Hank uh, Brill's, 1 25th of a second saturates on Regulus. And so all the long exposures that people take on the corona uh, will have a very clear uh, reference point in this bright star. And there are other stars in the field of view as well, but Regulus is, is uh, amazingly bright. For, uh, it's rare to have a, an opportunity like this to have such a bright star. Yeah, I want to mention that on June 3rd, we're also going to have Jupiter very close to the moon to kind of give us some testing points with that. So we're going to try on the pictures that you take on June 3rd, these test pictures. Uh, we're going to use those to test and see if we can actually make that um, work. Thanks, you guys. Um, I wanted to bring in a question from Rick Feinberg. Um, he wants to know, can you comment on how this project is different from and complementary to and or complementary to Matt Penn Citizen Kate project? Laura, you mentioned um, NASA's uh, funding Citizen Kate, and I can uh, answer this maybe just a little bit. Uh, so Citizen Kate should have 60 people across the path of totality, um, and they're all using the exact same equipment. So it's not exactly a citizen science project. They are all working with the same equipment. We are all gonna be using our own equipment, what we have at home. This is all volunteer led, and um, hopefully there will be a thousand of us across the path of totality. Um, one of the other pretty significant points is that 
we're going to be, uh, all of our things are going to be open source, um, which leads to another question. I just wanted you, Calvin, to comment on what the COO, CCO license means. I, don't, I wasn't familiar with it, and I was wondering if you could just talk about that for a second. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so it's commonly referred to as public domain. Uh, and this is uh, a Creative Commons license. Sorry, I meant to post the uh, link in the comments, which I will in a second. Um, and then, uh, so yes, f feel free to check it out. Let us know if you have concerns with that. Um, it, it pretty much, uh, it lets it sort of the photos be open to the public so that, that we're hoping that all of these photos will be used by the scientific community and the general public for years to come as part of this sort of open science uh, sort of vibe. Um, and I will say that uh, for all mega movie usages, uh, we will keep, um, we will give sort of uh, credit to the photographers and things like that if that's desired. So another up update that should be coming to the upload uh, screen is sort of what you want your name to be for attribution, the, the credits of mega movie. If you want it to be, you know, your favorite nickname or your, you know, full name, it's, it's, we'll give some options. Great. So there are so many really good questions here. I just want to remind you that if we don't get to all of them, we will post them all and the answers to those uh, in the Google group. So don't feel like you're missing out if we don't get to yours. Um, so Patrice Tanti asked, how many pictures do you need? Laura, do you want to take that one? Okay, yeah, so I, I think I answered there, but <laughs> hi, Patrice. Um, so uh, I... It, minimum, we'd like one image per photographer who's one of you for per photographer who's joining us, um, which is very a specific with specific specs that um, I think we've described here, but I'm not sure. At least I think those maybe have happened in the chat in the discussion group. Um, what we're looking for is an image of the the sun. Well, the moon the eclipse in the center of your image with two diameters um, in the vertical and one and a half diameters of the sun in the horizontal uh, plane so that we we can really see the corona um, but that's like one image so really we're hoping that you have high enough resolution uh, either through your um, lens or through through your camera in various ways as as someone said we have this calculator that igor developed and that will kind of give you our optimal uh setup for you all depending on what your cameras have um so since some of you won't have equatorial mounts and the sun moon system will be <laughs> moving across your field of view like this um then we're hoping you'll have a bigger field of view so that we can really see the um you know images throughout that progression so hopefully that was yeah understandable <laughs> absolutely yeah that makes a lot of sense and you has a comment about about the the more the data, the more data, the better. So uh, as many images as you can possibly share, I think that the archive, creating this uh, public access archive, uh, the, the bigger the archive, the more power it's got and the more use it will have. So uh, we would like to encourage a flood of, of data to come in. Yeah, and I'll, I'll make one point sort of following off that. Uh, we've got sort of two categories of uh, images that we talk about frequently. Uh, so there's the mega movie ones, which are the ones that will be stitched together algorithmically later that afternoon. So someone asked this question, but when, when are we going to generate the first mega movie? Um, we understand that a lot of people are going to be out in the middle of nowhere taking pictures. It'll take them a while to get back and get everything uploaded on the already overtaxed internets uh, that are you know, jam-packed with people from all over the, the country in a tiny little band. Um, so the, the first round of the movie is going to be produced about three hours after Totality finish, finishes crossing the US, so about 4 PM East Coast time. That's when we'll take the first cut. Uh, so if you're, you've uploaded your images by then, they'll be included in that first round, and then we'll sort of do regular updates uh, after that. So we more will sort of trickle in over the, the sort of few days after that, and so we'll continue to be improving it with more and more images. Uh, but to the first point, um, so there's the mega movie category of images, which are the ones that get stitched together immediately, and then as Hugh mentioned, we'll have an, uh, sort of an archive of all of the pictures we get. Uh, and so that both of those will be available for 
use in the future. So if you submit a bunch of images and some of them don't end up having GPS tags and we can't use them in the mega movie, they'll still be in that sort of big bucket of images for people to dig through and uh, learn from. So it's all yeah. going to a good cause. Great. I, then just to add, uh, kind of speak to what Calvin was saying, and I think it hopefully will help Rick Feinberg here understand that um, these two approaches. So for we want to use Regulus and these kind of very um, well-defined photos that people are uploading this one photo with a GPS tag that's very specific for the mega movie product, which won't be 90 minutes. <laughs> it will be probably a minute or two um, of images across the path for dissemination in a couple hours. So I just want to repeat what Calvin's saying a little bit. And then indeed, there's this question, all, all the stuff Rick's written here um, in our, as the eclipse crosses the country, the position angle of the sun's north pole will change with respect to local vertical. The sun's position with respect to regulus will change. Um, that's all correct. As, and then we have these two different mount, we have multiple mounting systems. So yes, there are a lot of angles <laughs> with these images. And that's why, um, you know, we will, be, we will then have a big data analysis process after the fact where we can really get all the angles um, <laughs> to align to the best possible, to the best, to the best of our ability. <laughs> this is where Google comes in. The magic happens. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I appreciate everybody's really, really great questions. Um, so um, it looks like that people are having trouble with chat. So uh, feel free to ask questions in or make comments in the Q&A. That's completely fine, too. Um, yeah, so we're not going to have the moon won't be in the same position as the eclipse in August. Most of you will also not be in the same position as when you're going to where you're going to be in August. I know I certainly won't. Um, yeah, but go ahead and test the GPS locations. You want to go and try and test all of those things for this trial run. That would be super helpful for us so that um, we know how it's working out for everybody. And, and just so you also have the, um, the experience doing that. All uh, right. So uh, any other questions that people are seeing that they want to jump in before we finish up here? Yeah. Vivian, I think that one of the questions that has uh, come up quite a few times is that there's a number of people that are not seeing that to-do list on when they go to their uh -huh. profile. And I know that we've got a uh, quite a list of people that uh, don't have a profile at this point. And so I think that um, Calvin might be able to address that, but I think that Vivian, you had uh, you know an idea I too. I am so glad you asked <laughs> because I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop. That seems to be working better. Uh, right. Um, view the presenter view. Let's see if that works. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. View the slideshow. Check. All right. Let's get past these guys, and I'll show you exactly what we're doing there. Except for you probably have a Q and A up. All right. Um, so if you're having trouble, if you are signing in and you're not seeing this uh, to do list on your sign-in. That is probably because you're using different emails for the Eclipse Mega Movie site and the photo team uh, Google group. Um, that uh, is only a problem if you want to upload your pictures, which we really want you to upload. So it's a very easy fix. Um, all you're going to want to do, oh yeah, check out this email and make sure that's the same one that you use on the photo team group. You can sign out and sign back in. Um, so this is just on the Eclipse Mega dot movie. You go to profile, or you click up here on the right hand side where your picture is, or where it says sign in. You sign in with the same email that you have uh, used with the Eclipse Photo Team group, and that should work for you. So, and it will take about a day or two for us to update that. So once you have the right email signed in, you can either even shoot us an email and we'll update it right away, or you can um, just wait a day and we will make sure. That one yeah. one note on that uh, you you do need to create your profile first. So if you if you have joined the Mega Movie Photo Team group with one email and you haven't created a profile on the Mega Movie website with that same email, you'll have to go through those same steps. Uh, it's like the three questions: the you know where where are you planning on being, you know roughly, and then what equipment do you need to use, and then I think there might be a create profile button. But if you uh, yeah. 
don't go through those steps, we can't add you to the proper group to see the sort of uploader page and all of those things. That's where you get to see the background um, because you've been uh, approved as a member of the Mega Movie team. I want to give a quick shout out to B&H Camera who are doing an amazing job in supporting us and they have a set of um, equipment if you don't have all the equipment that you need or you know people who are interested in doing it and want to um, get the equipment. They've given really good deals on sets of everything you're going to need to see the eclipse. So um, take a look at the link I've got down there or you can find it on the Google group as well. Um, they've set it up for many different, from the very, very basic setup all the way up to everything you could ever want. Um, and we're almost at the top of the hour, so I just want to do a quick wrap up and thank everyone so much. First of all, thank our panelists for all coming and helping us out here. And also to all of you volunteers who are listening in. Uh, we are planning to have a short video that will also outline all these steps in about 10 minutes is what we're shooting for. So um, that will be another place to look. Feel free to email us with questions you have as well. We'll post all the questions that we got here on the photo team site. Uh, make sure to upload those test moon photos. And that on the right hand side is why you want to do that. We are um, everybody who uploads their test moon photos and uploads a photo that works um, will receive a mega movie pin and some photo glasses, um, some eclipse glasses, sorry. So make sure you show everyone that you are part of this mega movie photo team. We'll be sure to get those to you. Uh, we will also have an advanced photo setup that's similar to our basic photo setup that's going to have way more detail. And we're working on ironing out a couple of, um, of the final details for that. So keep an eye out for Beyond the Basics if you have more questions that they should be answered there. And our next webinars, we'll have two more webinars at least, and those are going to be announced soon. Keep an eye out. And those are going to get kind of technical on some of these details as well. We're going to have some eclipse experts with us. So thank you all so very much. I appreciate everyone coming and joining us tonight. Um, we will see you in the dark, hopefully.